This is Jared from the Broken Seal, and today we're going to be playing Keyforge, Dark Tidings. More specifically, we're going to be doing the Adventure, the Key Kraken. Um, I got these printed out by MakePlayingCards.com, I believe. Um, the only sad thing about it was that the oversized Key Kraken card that was supposed to come... Is it Key Kraken or Key Racket? Key Racket. The oversized Key Racken card that was supposed to come to represent, you know, the monster... Uh, it was just a normal size card, so I don't have that. So apologies, and also our printer sucks, so I need to get a new one so that I can actually print out something bigger. But for now, we'll just have to make do with the basic one. Um, I have the rules ready to go here for, you know, how to do the key racking turns. Um, and got some counters nearby. I'm going to be using dice for the key rack and hit points, as well as another die for the keys that it forges. And I'll have my standard set of keys. If you're not familiar with the play and print adventure, there's two of them. This is the first one um, in it. It's a cooperative mode, either solo up to three players, I believe. And everyone works together to try and fight a mutual enemy. And each player goes, then the key rack and goes back and forth, back and forth. For the Kiraken, there's low tide and then there's high tide, just like with the Dark Tidings uh, Keyforge set. And low tide, the Kiraken can forge a uh, key for three amber. And then on high tide, the Kraken or Kiraken can forge a key for six amber per player. Um, but if it's on high tide, once it forges, it flips back down to low tide. And uh, at any point, if your team loses two amber per player then you can rise uh, raise the tide so uh, just some background if you're new to Keyforge, each deck is random it's made by some of the guys if not the guy who made magic the gathering um, they wanted to make a way a game where you can play without having to buy and chase down sets and cards and all that literally you just buy a pack each pack is randomized there's millions if not more combinations and you open this and you can just play right off the bat. They do have a checks and balance system known as chains that you can, um, or rather they can uh, attach chains to a deck if it wins too many times in the tournaments because there's a little uh, QR code. And um, yeah, that's really pretty much it. I really enjoy the game. I haven't got to play it as much, especially with COVID, but um, just because I played it in our local game shop a few times um, I really just get more enjoyment out of playing with people that I know, and my wife does not like Keyforge, or rather she hasn't played it. And uh, Madi does like Keyforge, but we have a lot of games that we need to play, so it doesn't always get into the mix. So, especially because, you know, Keyforge is kind of the games where I forget about it until a new set comes out, then you get a few cards from that set, play it, and then kind of forget about it. Another set comes out, and you're like, great, I can play again. It's really kind of wow. built for... Uh, in the game store play. You can just walk into the game store, pick up a pack, ready to go. But without further ado, let's see what cards I'm going to be playing with. So we have Blast the Roar of the Predator's Gate. And it's got Sanctum, Saurian, and Shadows. Alright, so I've shuffled. I have seven cards drawn. Um, the first player rule doesn't apply when you're playing the Keyforge Adventure, so I have seven cards, but I can still play as many cards as I want on my first turn, instead of it being the one card, uh, for your first turn. Also, the Key Rackin is gonna have, I believe, six plus two armor for each unforged key the active player has. So yeah. And blocks it too because as I forge keys, the armor is going to go down. It's going to make it easier to hurt the key racken. Uh, the key racken has three attack and 30 life. So if I kill the key racken, I win. If the key racken gets four keys forged, they win. All right, so I'm going to start off with shadows and I'm going to put down my asthma bomb artifact seeker needle and I'm gonna play horn swoggle which will allow me to use an enemy artifact as if it were mine I don't they don't have an artifact 
and but it will get me an amber. Also, I'm going to move this over more. Let's guard it there and ready up and draw up. Six. And then the key racking goes. The first thing they try and do is forge a key. They can't. Well, it tries to advance, but you can't. Uh, then the active player draws adventure cards. The active player draws cards in each of the key rackings archive. Uh, then the active player draws adventure cards. I would pull their cards from the archives, but they don't have any. And then draw the top two cards from the adventure deck. Each time a player draws an uh, adventure card, they play that card immediately before drawing the next. All right, so it's going to be Devour Hole action. For the remainder of the turn, the key rack can gain Skirmish and Prey, the least powerful creature. It fights, then readies. And if I remember correctly, yeah, so it gains Fight and Skirmish. Or gain skirmish and prey the least powerful creature so it would try and fight the least powerful creature i don't have any creatures out so nothing happens that gets discarded second card uh play if the tide is low heal six damage from the key rack if the tide is high you gain three chains so nothing happens in this case because he had no damage so not a horrible start um let's see okay uh, I'm going to go with Sanctum. I'm going to play Grey Augur. Let's go there. And I will also... play Heal or Harm to fully heal, heal a creature. Which, they're already fully healed. And gain one Amber. Then I'm going to spend two to turn it to high tide and then play. Yeah, I'm still on Sanctum. Strange Ordination, which gives me three amber. And I can only play it if the tide is high. And then ready up. And then the key racking goes, still can't forge. Okay, so last turn it would have reaped instead of fought, since even though it got prey, there were no creatures available, so it would have won. Um, then it's turn. We're gonna draw cards. So right now it needs six to be able to forge a uh, key. Behold its grandeur. Play, the key racking gains one for each creature you control that shares a house with one or more of its neighbors to a maximum of four. This has no neighbor, so it gains none. And then Swift Current, it gains two for playing it. Uh, and then Action, oh, so this is an artifact. Each artifact enters play in the key racking's play area exhausted near the key racking, but distinct from its battle line. So yeah. On subsequent turns, the key reckons creature with the highest power captures one from you. If you have no uh, amber, destroy swift current and lower the tide. Oh, and this readies up. And then the key racking gains one key. Alright, I'm going to go with Sanctum again. First, I'm going to play Mad Prophet Gizzleheart. Uh, while Mad Prophet Gizzleheart is in the center of your battle line, it gains action, fully heal each non-mutant creature. Gain one amber for each creature healed this way. And I'm also going to play Larry of the Lake. Uh, while the tide is high, each friendly creature gains plus two armor, which will count for both of these. Actually, it says each friendly creature, including so 
This gets two. This gets another two. And then that gets two. Didn't think I would have that many armor. Um, and then I will attack the Kiraken. So it goes through my armor with its three damage. And then I do three damage to it. Oh, wait, no, there'd be no point in attacking the Kiraken because it still has six uh, armor. And I don't have enough people to attack. So, in that case, I'm going to reap. To gain one. And end my turn. All right, so start of its turn, uh, can't forge, then it uses, uh, no, I think then I, yeah, draw cards, race to the surface, it gains one amber, so now it's at five, uh, for each time the key rack and has advanced this game and archives one adventure card, draw that many cards, so it hasn't uh, ar uh, advanced at all, so it doesn't archive any but it does gain the one amber from it. And then Lashing Tentacle, Creature. Prey, the most powerful creature, and it has Skirmish. Destroy, deal three damage to the key rack and ignoring armor. And it comes in exhausted to the right flank of the key, uh, key rack battle line. Then the key rack and its creatures are used. It goes first and it's gonna reap. Then the artifact goes the key Rackin's creature with the highest power captures one from you. If you have no amber, destroy swift current and lower the tide. So it's going to capture one. And then ready up. And the key Rackin is in check. And it's my turn. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to stay with Sanctum. And I'm going to fight using the Mad Prophet Gizzel Heart to attack this. So this has three, but I have three shield just base, so it does no damage to me. And when it's destroyed, it deals three damage to the Kiraken, ignoring armor. And then I gain the Amber back. And because of Grey Augur, whenever my neighbor fights, I gain one Amber. So that puts me at one, two, three, four, five. And uh do 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 do. I'm gonna reap with the two of them. Which puts me in check. And I will end my turn. Beginning of the Key Rackin's turn. One, two, three, four, oops, five, six. It forges a key, putting it at one, and also going into low tide. which means I lose this ability. For the time being. Uh, and then draw two cards. Preternatural Will. The tide is low, heals six damage from the key rack in. If the tide is high, you gain three change. So it heals the damage I did and it's back to full health. Defend the key racket. It gets one amber. Uh, it is an action. Ward the key racket in each of its creatures. So just the key racket gets warded. So essentially, the next time the key racket were to be damaged, 
it doesn't take any damage from the ward. Oh, I forgot the red yet, last turn. Um, Alright, so that was the key rack in. The draw phase. Then the key rack in goes. First, it's going to reap. Then it's going to do... Key Rackin's creature with the highest captures one. If you have no amber... So it tries to do this, but there's no creature to capture it, and the key rack and specifically doesn't count as a creature, so nothing happens. And it's back to my turn. Alright, so I'm gonna go with Saurian. Uh, and I'm gonna go with Spoils of Battle, which gains me one oh wait. One, two, three. I start start off with six. That's two, four, six. Which gives me one key and lowers his armor by two. And then I play Spoils of Battle, gives me one amber. And then a, a friendly creature captures one. I'll give it to the Mad Prophet. And each friendly creature with amber on it captures one from its opponent. Then I'm going to play Medicus Lacus, which has an ability for when the tide is high, but right now it's not. And I wouldn't do it anyway. And then I'm going to discard a card. And do my Omni ability for the Key Rackin to lose two Amber. And turn the tide back to high. Ready up. All the shields come back. And now I can use the Medicus Lacus ability that while the tide is high, I may spend amber on friendly creatures as if it were in my pool. So I have another two amber. Okay. Key Rackin goes. First card is Slippery Arm. It's elusive and it has. Ooh. Skirmish. Okay, I did that right. When skirmish fights, they take no damage. When slippery, when elusive uh, is attacked, they take no damage from the first attack. All right, so this is elusive, and it gains reap. If the tide is low, the key rack and archives one adventure card. Uh, and when it's destroyed, deal three damage to the key rack and ignore an armor. So that was our first card. Second card is the Lashing Tentacle. Prey, the most powerful creature, and it has still the one we've already seen. Then the key rack is used first. It gets one. And the key rack creature with the highest power captures one. I don't have any to capture, actually, because that doesn't count. So that's perfect. Uh, oh, also, if I have no amber, destroy swift current and lower the tide. Which was not perfect because now I lose all this. And these ready up. And where are we at here? I'm going to go with, all right, I'm going to go with Saurian, Saur, uh, Saurian again, and I will first play Carpe Venom to exalt two enemy creatures, which means that they get one amber each. Then I'm going to bring in Un Undagnathus, which, uh, while the tide is low, Undagnathus deals no damage when fighting. And then I'm going to play Crushing Charge. Destroy each creature with power 4 or lower, and then gain one chain. So these two get destroyed. 
And when a creature with amber on it is destroyed, I gain the amber. And... I'm going to again spend two to flip the tide, which will give everyone shield. And then I'm going to attack with Medicus Lacus, which will take, he'll take one damage. But then the Kirakin will also take one damage. So he's down to at least one damage. It's, it's something. Um, I guess I could have reaped with him. But that's fine. I can also do this and then heal each non-mutant creature, which they count as. So, uh, And then that'll be the end of my turn. There's no more Omni things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, ready up. And, oh wait, you know what? I didn't do any damage to him. Hold on. I messed up. So this counts as destroying. When I destroyed the two of these, they would have dealt three damage to the key rack in. The first one would have been blocked. The second one would have dealt three. And then I dealt one. I caught it. And then I end my turn. Key rack in goes, it can't forge, or advance rather. Uh, this is the tenacious arm. Reap the key rack and steals one from you. And when it's destroyed, deal three damage to the key rack and ignore an armor. And second card. Defend the key rack and it gains one amber. Uh, ward the key rack and, and each of its creatures. That sucks. You just got rid of the ward. And then the key rack and will gain an amber and there's no more things this readies up and it's back to me I'm gonna go with sanctum uh, my first so first I'm gonna play taxing journey which gains me one amber and it says a friendly uh, friendly creature captures one so I'm going to do it on Mad Prophet Gizzleheart. And then each of its neighbors that share a house with it also capture one. Which are Larry of the Lake and Grey Augur. Which gives me, because of Grey Augur's ability, or no, uh, Medicus Lacus's ability, gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, I forgot that when Medicus Lacus fought Grey Augur's ability would have gained me one amber. So I'm looking pretty good. Um, so I need to find a way to get rid of all these creatures that the key recognized. All right, so first I'm gonna attack with Larry. The arm, which will do nothing because of the ward but it does deal three damage to Larry which brings it knocks off the shield for this turn then I'm gonna fight it with Grey Augur which will kill it but will also deal three damage which gets rid of all of its shield and then deals three damage to the Kirakin which pops this off And then, oh, Larry would have taken one damage. That was what I was. Then I'm going to use the Mad Prophet Gizzleheart's action to heal each non-mutant creature and gain one for each creature healed this way. So I can heal this and this and gain two amber because he does not count as a creature. Then ready up. 
and I'm in check now because of Medicus Lockett's ability. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I get to draw one card. And then end my turn. Key Racken goes. Can't forge. First card is the Whirlpool Eddy. Uh, action. So this is an artifact with action. Stun and exalt one of your creatures that is not already stunned. If all your creatures are stunned, destroy Whirlpool Eddy and lower the tide. I don't like that card. And also devour whole. For the remainder of the turn, the key rack can gain skirmish and prey. This is a power, right? Yeah, I mean an artifact, yeah. All right, so this one is an action. For the remainder of the turn, the key rack can gain skirmish and prey, the least powerful creature. It fights, then readies. It will fight again when it's used. Oh, wow. The least powerful creature. Okay. Um, so let me make sure the two armor went back on at the end of the turn for these two. So then... Oh, this gained, gained it in amber. So it's going to attack with skirmish so with its skirmish i'm pretty sure that means that for the rest of the turn when it fights it takes no damage so it's going to fight larry deal three damage the shields come off and larry takes one damage then the key racken readies and fights again you're going to go after larry larry dies and everyone loses their shield. I was not a fan of that. Especially because Mad Prophet Gizelhart is now in the middle. Um, or no longer in the middle. Then this readies. And... That's the end, because instead of... Uh, using it, it readied and fought and then fought again. Okay, beginning of my turn. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I gain two. It loses two. And where are we at? Alright, I'm going to go with Sanctum again. First, I'm going to play Seneschal Sargat. Should I go with? Hmm. If I used Saurian, I could deal 12 dam uh, 10 damage to him. And then another 5, so I could deal 17 damage in one turn. Okay, I'm going to go with Saurian. First, I'm going to play Cornison Octavia. Octavia, rather. To capture two, which I'll just get one. Oh, it's a creature. I didn't realize that. Okay, so that's even better. So yeah, I play that, and then I'm going to... It all works out, no matter what, who I attack with first. I'm going to attack the key rack in twice. First time, I take three damage. But they take 12. Or no, they take 10. Six, eight. Yeah, they take ten. I did that right. I'll check it when I do the edit. <laughs> uh, then I attack with Medicus Lacus to deal five. And uh, Medicus Lacus also takes three. And then I shall end my turn. Drawing up one. And. Oh, I forgot when I. I forgot the chain that I had before. So I just won't draw one to make up for it. Um, which then it would go down to zero. Then.
Key racking goes. Can't forge a key. Draws one card. Left in its wake. It gains one amber. Uh, play exhaust your most powerful creature, and each creature you control that shares a house with it. If the tide is high, the key, uh, the key rack and archives one adventure card. I'm going to assume it means mine. Yeah, it means mine. So my most powerful creature is the Undagnathus, which means that these also get exhausted. And since the tide is high, it's going to archive one card, which I'll put there. Then race to the surface. It gets one amber. And then uh, for each time the key racken has advanced this game and archives one adventure card, draw that many cards. Okay, so it archives one, and then I draw one. So I got that card back anyway. Um, then the key racken uses, gets one amber, and then the whirlpool eddy goes, stun and exhaust one of your creatures that is not already stunned. You know what? I'll stun and exhaust the gray auger. And then my turn. I will go with Sanctum. I'm going to start by discarding a card. And then I'm going to use Mad Prophet Gizzleheart's ability to heal each non-mutant creature. So that's one, two. And then for each creature healed this way, gain one amber. And then... Ready up. All right, so first step, Key Racken's going to try and forge. It doesn't have enough. I'm going to assume, because it says if the Key Racken has cards in its archives, those get picked up. I'm going to assume those get counted as drawed first. So then we still have to draw the normal two. So first it's going to do Crushing Arm. Prey, the least powerful flank creature, and destroy deals three damage to the Key Racken. And that one has nine damage. And then Primordial Upgrade, the Key Racken gains Reap Archive 1 Adventure card. After a player forges a key, destroy Primordial. Which, one, two, three, four. I was not in check, so that's good. Um, I believe the upgrades still have to go on a creature. Nope, each upgrade is attached to the Key Racken. Okay, so it's still only at one. Then we draw its normal two cards. Ascending Jet action, give the Key Rackens, so this is another artifact, uh, give the Key Rackens creature with the lowest power three plus one power counters. If that creature has nine or more power, destroy Ascending Jet and lower the tide. That's not great. That means next turn that's going to happen, unless another creature comes up and it doesn't. So Behold is Grandeur. Play the Key Racken gains one amber for each creature you control that shares a house with one or more of its neighbors to a maximum of four. So... One amber for each creature that you control that shares a house with one or more of its neighbor. So that's one, two, three. So it gains four. So the key racking is in check. Uh, it's going to go first and it's going to reap to get one and then also archive a card. Then action stun and exhaust ah oh, that's annoying stun and exhaust one of your creatures that is not already stunned considering how little life the key racken has i'm going to go with sanctum for it to get to get stunned and exhausted so this one will get stunned Then everything readies up. And we're on my turn. I'm gonna go with Saurian. So at the beginning of my turn, I only have four keys. And 
Yeah, I mean, he only has 11 life left, and I can do 17 damage. So yeah, I'm going to attack with these two again. I'll take three damage each. But I do gain one amber. And Kirakin takes ten, uh, yeah, ten first. Which will put it at one damage left. And then five damage, which puts it at zero. And the key racket has been destroyed. What, what? <laughs> uh, I actually heard a lot about this and that it wasn't easy. So I was surprised that my first time playing in a while, uh, going up against the key racket wasn't super hard. Um, in the beginning, I was a little worried because, you know, I, I was getting a lot of shadow cards and shadow is good for dealing with creatures, but I didn't have many creatures, especially in the beginning for the uh, key racket. So, um, I can only assume I did something wrong during all of this, so if you spot anything, just let me know. But otherwise, um, this was really fun. I like the Dark Tidings set. This this deck that I got was really cool. I didn't get to see the Enhance card. Um, since we're at the end, I'm just going to kind of shuffle through real quick and see what was enhanced in the deck. So if you're unaware, the Enhance symbol is he, well the enhance effect is here um which means it enhanced it with uh, a damage it'll have the symbol next to it and let you know that the icon's already been added to the card so this just lets you know something else is enhanced in the deck uh so that when you get it you can see this card has a different like symbol it's kind of like jaggedy and crackled compared to the amber symbol above it or the amber amber symbol in other cards or other symbols that might be there. So that lets you know that when you play that version of Horn Swoggle compared to the one that I got early on, that when I play it, I gain one Amber and also deal one damage. So that's really cool. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed this. Uh, maybe I'll try it again on a harder difficulty and hopefully we can get Madi to play this. And I've said end like three times in the last two to three minutes. So I'm just going to stop by saying like, comment, and subscribe. And nope, oh, said it again. Couldn't get away from it. Hope you guys enjoy. Until next time. Bye.